All right, welcome back. Episode 143 of Chaotically Intolerant. Um, I think this is probably going to be the final football episode, probably for about a month. We're going to go back into baseball. Um, but, yeah, we're going to do, uh, what, free agency coaches, and then we're going to do a uniform draft um, to be a good bookend to the end of the official end of the NFL season for us. Um, but we do have a possible big guest coming. Uh, we're not going to say who yet, but possible uh, for around draft time or right after the combine draft time, somewhere in that area. Um, but we're going to cover the free agents today. And uh, yeah, the, the draft will be at the end of the episode. So um, let's just, let's, let's jump into it. Right. Um, I guess I want to talk coaching first. Um, who, who was the, who was your favorite coach? I guess to get hired. Oh, favorite new coach? Yeah, favorite new coach. God, that's what do we have? Dan Quinn. Which is meh to me. Uh, that Mike, is so Well, boring. I mean, I, I'm happy for Mike McDonald, obviously. Yeah. The Ravens, you know, getting some... It's bad for the Ravens, but probably good for Seattle. Uh, Panthers hired Dave Canales. And, of course, uh, Brian Callahan of Tennessee, Gerard Mayo. But the biggest name is Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. I, w- I would think that's got to be... I mean, I'm I'm happy to see the Chargers doing something, even if it's not on the field necessarily, bringing back a coach that has a winning pedigree. Because, look, he did win. I mean, he was only in the league, what, four years? The Niners was 11 through 14, right? And yeah, three of those years, about right. the 49ers went from pretty much anonymity. I don't think they'd made the postseason since 02. And then Harbaugh comes in. He was 44, 19, and 1. As a head coach. Right, so 64 and four, yeah. four years, yeah. 11 through 14. So he immediately turned them around, got them to overtime in the NFC Championship mm-hmm. game this first year. I, I, I think that's got to be the, yeah, that's got to be the best one. I mean, the Chargers, it's always been about culture there. Yeah. It's always just been there. hasn't been enough accountability, lack of just a winning attitude. Hiring Harbaugh, not only is he a good coach, but it signifies, like, they were willing to bring in a guy that, can elevate you now. Of course, now the front office has to put good players on the field, but now the players have to step up. Yeah. So I think that's that's the best one. I think Dan Quinn quietly is a good move too, because for all the heat he gets about twenty eight to three, he did take the Falcons to the Super Bowl. They had a lot of success. Well, he listen, he had a twenty five point lead in the Super Bowl against that's a new a really good New England. Yeah, team. that's that's all we have to say. He had a twenty five point lead in the Super Bowl. That's it. Nobody remembers what happened after that. Well, Kyle Shanahan. <laughs> yeah, I I really honestly I really like the Dave Canales hire for the Panthers. I'm, I'm I go back and forth on it because it feels like they might be trying to do that quarterback whisperer thing that they did with Frank Reich, but Dave Canales has a like the past two seasons he has a proven track record of Geno Smith and Baker Mayfield reviving their careers when they were basically dead. And you could say the media is saying that Bryce Young is already dead, already dead. one year into year his ahead. career. Uh, so I really like the hire. I thought that was one of the best ones. Um, the Titans hiring Brian Callahan and I mean, firing my favorite was stupid, but he's a yes man. I think that's all it is. He, I, he sees, he's a yes man. That's that was my least favorite departure of a coach was yeah. Mike Rabel. I, I don't get that at all. There's something screwy going on with ownership there. Um, the Panthers have had good some good fortune as far as their worst seasons. They've always been able to turn around quickly. They're one in fifteen, you know, one, two years later they're in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. They were two and fourteen. They brought in Ron Rivera. I think three years later they were division champs. They got a bye. Yeah. And then, you know, a couple years after that the Super Bowl. So maybe maybe it's just, you know, and the bar is is set really low. You come into a two and fifth Fifteen team where your owner is making negative headlines. I mean, and you don't have the, you don't even have the number one. You don't have a first round pick. You don't have a first round pick, which stinks. But at least there's no first round pick to blow it on. Yeah, you're only going to blow it with the guy who was somebody else's first round pick. It's Bryce Young. Um, Antonio Pierce was the the no brainer. I think that's yeah, the no brainer. Yeah, that's not a. I guess that is technically a new coach, but it's it's, it's just renewing the interim. Yeah, I mean it's hard to like s- to praise them for a good because mm-hmm. it's like how do you not? I mean they, Devontae Adams and Max Crosby were going to request a trade if they did. Yeah, that was that was the rumor. Well, I least. think they should have learned their lesson with Rich Passaccia. Yeah, because they they had a great run to get to the playoffs in twenty one mm-hmm. after Gruden was let go, and. Um, 
then this horrible debacle with Josh McDaniels. Yeah. And I have an interim coach that does really well, beats the Chiefs, and he gets them, them playing hard, and you're going to go after the next shiny toy? I don't think so. And so Chiefs, them, Chiefs but... fans are getting upset because he said they're going to, what was it, they're going to do the, the Jordan rule with Patrick Mahomes. So they're just going to try and beat the shit out of Patrick Mahomes. And Chiefs fans are like, oh, you can't, you can't say that. I was like, as long as you're not doing the Sean, um, yeah. oh, my God, what the, what the hell is his name? Um, Peyton. That, Sean Peyton. The yeah. Sean Peyton route of that, like the blueprint, I think that's fine. Like, as long as you're not deliberately hurting someone, roughing up a quarterback a little bit, that's, oh, it that's perfectly it's fine. part of the game and yeah. it's part of the Raiders and – the Bill Belichick oh, against the Rams in 01. I mean, that was that whole game plan was about hitting and hitting hard. Yeah. Maybe occasionally hitting late. There were plays that probably today would be called penalties, but yeah. you have to be physical in the NFL. Mm -hmm. You do. You have to intimidate your opponents. Yeah. Um, and then speaking of Belichick, obviously he they leave or he leaves uh, January 11th, and Gerard Mayo, which was again they wasted no time. One day was the official wow. time from parting ways to new hire. Um, Gerard Mayo, former Patriot, uh, won a – did he win a Super Bowl? He did win a Super Bowl with them. He did, but he was on an IR. I think it was his last year in 2014, I want to say. Twenty. It says 2015, although I don't know yeah, if they're counting I, I the – I think he was – He retired. The trans yeah. yeah early in the season. Well, maybe he played. But he won – he did win a ring in yeah. But Mayo was the – like hand picked that's what everyone said. He was the hand picked by Belichick saying, Take this guy, this is my like I'm telling you, I'm giving you the keys, basically. Yeah. Um, which is if if I told you that five years ago, I don't know if it would be shocking that Belichick would be leaving the Patriots five years ago because of his age. I don't know if that would be a shock. But if it was Gerard Mayo, I feel like that would be a little bit of like a huh? Like you have know, Bill O'Brien and Josh McDaniels there. Well, how are you handing the keys to Gerard Mayo of right. people? Or your son, <laughs> Steve yeah, Belichick, yeah. who I think he landed a job in college. A lot of coaches are going to college. Bill O'Brien oh. going to Boston College. Um, you said Stephen Belichick went to college? Uh, yeah. New coach. Defensive coordinator for the University of Washington. Yeah. Wow, they're defending runner-ups there's there's a lot of former uh coordinators and just coaches in general going over to college which is odd to me i don't know why i mean I feel like it's still the nfl and if anything it's getting harder for coaches in college because of the nil stuff mm. but maybe they're more used to dealing with money as right. nfl coaches i don't know very odd to me but um well, Steve Belichick, you heard him talk. He sounds just like his father. Oh, it's yeah. it's scary. That tongue, that tongue. He's the tongue. Like, he he yeah. he's good with the tongue. <laughs> I'll tell you that. And Steve Belichick confirmed probably good with the tongue. Um, let's see, Dave Canal, Raheem Morris uh, with the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, I mean, Arthur Smith. How do you, how do you not fire him? Um, and then Raheem Morris, which I feel like again, like Belichick had a second meeting with them. It was like a this is guaranteed, and then. I mean, he's he's nowhere to be seen now. It's defensive, again, another defensive-minded head coach. They were looking at two defensive-minded head coaches, which is again. Odd. Was Raheem Morris? He was a coordinator previously with Atlanta, right? He's he's coached in that organization before. Um, I think. Let's see. Uh, I want to say that he he has coached. He was yes, Atlanta he was, interim's head coach. Right. He was he was uh, on the staff when they went to the Super Bowl with. Dan Quinn, who just got hired, we're saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that, it's weird. Like, more, you know, Morris is, he's not a new, he's a new hire, but he's not a new coach. Mm -hmm. You know, we think, like, a lot of these guys have never coached before. Callahan and Mayo. Um, obviously, Harbaugh has and, uh, and Quinn has. But sometimes it's, like, more exciting when you get a guy who's never been a head coach before. Yeah. Because there are these preconceived notions, like, well, we have Raheem Morris, but I think about when he was with the Bucks, and they didn't do that well. And you're like... So it's easy to judge hires sometimes based on previous roles, especially, you know, and I want to say if it ended badly, it usually does end yeah. badly. It's pretty rare, guys, like, well, I won the Super Bowl, I'm leaving, give me my yeah. next job. It's, you know, usually, well, we had a couple of rough years or, you know, management and I didn't get along. And so I think that I think that's like the Todd Bowles effect. I feel like that is the number one thing everyone thinks about Todd Bowles with. 
Like his, they think about his tenure with Jets. Right. When he was in New England, and that was a disaster. Like Geno Smith got punched in the face, I think. Did he? When I want to say he got punched in the face. Not Bulls by Todd Bowles, No, it was uh, like a wide receiver or something. Uh, I can't remember who it was. Um, uh, Mike McDonald as well. You know a lot about Mike McDonald. Um, is this, I mean, is this good? Is it, what do you think? Yeah. I For think, Seattle, at least. I think so. I think that's an exciting one. A good, good defensive mind, an aggressive coach. Um, Seattle needs to go defense because they're, they, they're still in the shadow of the Legion of Boom. Um, so I think that it kind of makes sense that they would go with a more defensive minded head coach to try to bring some of that back. They're a pretty young defensive team. So I think that's a good hire. Yeah. I do. I think, you know, look, he's a 36-year-old guy. Um, but it, it, it's like a thing now. Remember when Gruden was like one of the first kind of young coaches in the late 90s? And it was kind of like, oh, and then and now we're just seeing it like all the time. Yeah. There's coaches are, that are younger than players on the team. And, um, you know, I mean, like McDonald worked his way up. He did a great job for a while with the Ravens. And he spent a year at Michigan. And, um so he's not, you know, he's not just, he's young, but he's experienced as a coach. And that's the thing. A lot of, a lot of these coaches are young, but they start right away. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they move up fast. So, yeah, I think uh, I think that's a great hire. Not so good for the Ravens, but it's good for Seattle. Mike McDonald also is now adding to the, hold on, what is it? It's the Mike and then MC last name and then. So Mike McCarthy, Mike McCoy. Yeah, and then there's another, I want to say Dan is the other one. No, it's not that. I Let me look that up, because there's a Venn diagram of names in the of, of NFL head coaches. Let me find this here. In the meantime, I will say this. It's interesting. Maybe it makes sense. You know, Pete Carroll had been coaching with the Seahawks for like 14 years he was there. Mm-hmm. As a coach, so you replace this legendary guy, and it's like you have Gerard Mayo, who's never coached, yeah. never been a head coach, replacing Bill Belichick. So yeah. maybe it's maybe that's by design, maybe not. As opposed to saying like we're going to go from Bill Belichick, then we're going to bring in like Mike McCarthy or something. It's real. I think it's really hard to do that. Like, how are you going to follow up Bill Belichick? I think he was the perfect guy because you're never going to. It's like bringing in a, a the next head coach for Alabama. Right. No matter what you do, they're going to say, but Saban. Right. Saban right. did this. But it's, so it's easier for a young coach probably. Mm-hmm. Like, but hey, yeah. it's, it's only my first year. You know, yeah. Belichick's first year, 5-11, and 11, right? Pete Carroll's first year. Um, that was the year they were 7-9, and nine, but they won a playoff game. Yeah. But still, it was under 500. Uh, it is the Mike, Sean, and Mick Venn diagram. So Mike and Sean, oh, so big Sean circle. Sean McVay. Uh, Sean McDermott. McDermott. And then Sean Payton. Right. And then you have Mike McDonald, Mike Tomlin, Mike, wait, Mike McDonald, M-A-C, not M-C. Okay. Yeah. And then Mike Tomlin, and then you have Mike McCarthy and Mike McDonald. Well, you also had Mike McCoy coach the Chargers earlier this day, or in the 2010s. He's a quarterback coach now. Nah, I don't know. He's an offensive coach. I thought that was going to be in there, too. <laughs> this, this is just active. This is all okay. just active. Just active. There's six, there's seven head coaches that are Yeah, he's a quarterback this, coach of yeah. the Jaguars now, Mike McCoy, so. Not doing a very good job. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, right, right. And he was head coach for four years for the Chargers. Uh, my uncle likes to say, he's a Chargers fan, uh, was it uh, Chargers University? Four years and you're out. You're out. Yeah. yeah. Lynn, Brandon Staley, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then the, uh, I think we did talk, we touched a little bit on, uh, Dan Quinn, but I find that just to be kind of boring, I guess, just kind of, it's, it's not like an, it's not a sexy hire that I expected from Josh Harris and the new ownership. Do you think maybe there's a part of the ownership or a front office that was like, but it's cool to say we took the Cowboys defensive coordinator who you know there could be you yeah. ripped them apart last year yeah. you're both sides of the ball mm-hmm. it's like okay now we you know we didn't get michael parsons but we got you know your your puppet master if you will <laughs> um and again i i'm i think it's i think it's a good hire because dan quinn he was on the carousel for or I, I know that's not the right word he was like in the you know it, it, on the bench in the on deck circle there for a while, seeming like he was going to get a head coaching job. And heck, we thought Eric Bieniemy would be a slam dunk. He went yeah. just took a job, OC college, college, right? Yeah. So 
Of course, they also you think about all these coaches who they're pen, in a way they're penalized for their teams being so good because the the, the hiring cycle like ends while team, like Steve Spagnolo. Yeah, I mean he had a terrible run as a head coach with mm-hmm. the Rams, but how is he not? I mean, you're talking about like an elite Hall of Fame level coordinator yeah. who's just had an extension didn't even bother to. I mean, and and maybe there's a genius to that because some guys, some coaches are just much better suited to be coordinators. Yeah. They're just not head coaches. They're mm-hmm. just great at calling plays, calling yeah. schemes. Spagnola might just be one of those guys. I used to think Mike Mars was like that. I mean, he was decent. He got them to a Super Bowl, but he was such he was just much better suited to be a play caller. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think a part of that is I don't really believe in I don't think there's a lot of head coaches that should be play callers. Like you should not basically you should not be focusing on one you're that means you're not focusing on 66 percent of the team right that means you're giving if you're an offensive offensive minded head coach you're giving all of your or most of your attention to the 33 percent. you're giving it to the offense the defense is going to lack and you have to rely on the defensive coordinator and your special teams are going to lack you're going to rely on a special teams coordinator i feel like you have to give that up and that's really difficult for a lot of guys they have the ego. egos yeah and but I think that's really necessary to succeed. And obviously there's plenty of successful coaches out there that call plays. Like that's not out of the question whatsoever. Right. But I think we're seeing it more and more with especially young coaches who are really not willing to give that stuff. Like Mike McDonald. You mean Mike McDaniel? McDaniel. 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 I mean, my Jesus. <laughs> all the, all like the mix, next the year. mix. Yeah. All of it's mixed up in my head. Oh, jeez. Um, Mike McDaniel, Mike McDaniel, Sean McDermott, Sean McVay, Mike McDonald, Mike McCarthy, Mike McCoy. <laughs> it just never ends. It's yeah. But uh, you could say that with him. I mean, yeah. how many, how many fucking screens are they going to run? Oh, and those fades on the goal line. Yeah. You can go for it on like fourth and goal, the six. Yeah. Like in the Dallas game, I think was one of them. And, mm-hmm. They're just, I mean, that's why the Dolphins, to me, that's why it just personifies the Dolphins. Yeah. They're just they're trying to do way too much. Yeah. It's that Miami ch- chicken like, shit. Hey, he looks good. You know, he's got the cool style, but yeah. that's, is that what we're here for? Yeah. We're here to be a tough minded team. In yeah. Games. That's why I think Belichick should be their defensive coordinator. And um, they, the, I know the Dolphins just released Xavier Howard. Yeah. But Jalen Ramsey sound, uh, had a quote about Vic Fangio saying basically he fucked that up, that they could have been something like that. That secondary could have been really good if it wasn't for Vic Fangio, wow. which is Vic Fangio. Not, not a bum. No, not, <laughs> not at, all. at all. I think Jalen Ramsey's kind of a bum. <laughs> I know he, he seems like a guy who, who can either be really great or really awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He just like, I don't know if he just mails it in or, or if he's just, and he kind of remember he went off on, some players a few years he had, ago. He had some attitude problem in Jacksonville, yeah. and I think there was an issue in, in Florida State, too, and he was great at Florida State. He was, obviously, that's what it got him drafted. I think he was a first-round pick, right? He, he reminds me, he's like the defensive version of Stefan Dix. They're both very bright guys, get charismatic guys, but they, in Dominic and Sue, I mean, he was a little different because he was kind of a dirty player. Yeah. They were all very intelligent guys who just thought they were above everything else. Yeah. And I guess speaking of the bill, Sean McDermott, Yes, Sean McDermott. McDermott, yeah. Also said the bill, like, w- it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when we win the Super Bowl. Wow. Which first, Mar- Marv Levy, the head coach of the Bills, I'm sure he said that with Jim Kelly and Thurman I don't Thomas. Think so. Well, I'm sure, like, at some point he said that, like, maybe even in private meetings. He was like, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Like, Marv Levy, those- he had one great quote, his depth. Depth is great until you have to use it. <laughs> Marv Levy quote. Yeah. Still alive, by the way. Almost 100 years old. I found word for Marv Levy. Still looks great. Good for him. I mean, I'd say it looks great. He's still with it. I think they yeah. had a, a lunch or something to honor him. Yes, he's 98 years old. Still living. Good for uh, him. Yeah. yeah. But him, I think McDermott saying that, I was like, when I, when I thought about it, I was like, yes. I guess technically, odds-wise... At some point, the Buffalo Bills have to win the Super Bowl. This, this should have been. Whether it's 150 years from now, right, when right. the NFL is playing with robots and, you know, whatever. Like, technically, yes. But I think as long as Patrick Mahomes is there, I don't care who you have. That team has a mental block. They do. That just cannot get past that red and white. This was their year. Well, this was a year. 
But the good, I, we were saying before about the salary cap going up. I think it, the Bills could benefit from this a lot too. They were really even tighter than the Chiefs were. Yeah, um, they've already restructured one of the linemen's contract. I think they're a team that they need to get tons of defense. Yeah, like defense, they need to become like a like a legion of boom kind of defense. It, it they're ever going to get past Kansas City. Yeah, they just feel like they're never able to get that big stop. You know, like when that drive. When, when the Chiefs are driving to win the game, right, right and you're sitting on third and three, you're thinking, okay, you or fourth and three, you've got to get a stop. Here. Right. You have to get a stop here. And every single time they fall. Like, there's no stopping anyone trying to pick up some late fourth down to, to win the game. Right. It's just right. impossible. Yeah. Well, and then the Von Miller signing hasn't really panned out for them. He's kind of yeah. a, a backup now. Well, and then he had, he's had that issue with the – I don't even know what it was. I don't know what happened with it, but it was a, a domestic abuse thing oh, in mid-season, and right. he was still playing. Um, I'm not sure what actually happened with that, but I'm. I don't think that's done yet. I think it's still going to be going to some sort of court, so they could be in need of a of another pass. Well, pass. yeah, I mean, I, I think boy, wouldn't it be something if Chris Jones hits the market? I mean, I think that's like they need to do something like that. It was like almost like when the Colts got Vinatieri. Yeah, like that wasn't a huge thing, but it was like we got one of your weapons. Yeah, you know what I mean. I feel like the Bills need to get. It was an energy changer. Yeah, go well, get Townsend, Commander Jet. Like, well, sure, yeah, but he had an injured punter last year, right? Mark was hurt. Yeah, but I'm talking about like a spot. You go out and get a Sneed or a Chris Jones. Mm -hmm. And put some big money there, and and that's a two player swing, right? The Chiefs yeah. would lose that guy, and you would get him. Yeah, I feel like that's the only way Buffalo's getting over the hump. Yeah, or like, someone takes out Kansas City for them in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, that, or or like Mahomes gets hurt, like yeah, right, right. You know, then it's that's, like, that's how Ben that's really, how Big Ben got to his to his Super. Well, you know, he avoided the Patriots. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, I think Josh Allen is the Big Ben of this generation, right? Because because they're doing nice, all these the comparisons. Winning. Yeah. I don't know Jackson and and uh, Allen and even I mean they're I'd have to think about it they're almost more like the Philip Rivers at this point I because you got to win well Al I mean I know that not from a play not a, not a physical or anything but just you're talking about a guy that's been good and and good and good and good and just cannot get over that hump that was like a Philip Rivers I felt like yeah. You know, almost I could almost say an Andrew Luck. I mean, we didn't see. We didn't really get to but, see yeah. enough, but yeah, I mean, they never. I mean, those Colts teams, like, but well, somebody was talking about. Um, maybe I did talk about this last week, but they were talking about the Lions. Oh, they're gonna, they're going to get back there. They're gonna get back there, and then somebody posted something about. Oh well, these teams said they're gonna get back there, and they never got back. Yeah, the twenty fourteen Colts. They posted. I was like, that that team had a. That team was a middle of the rank defense with one of the worst schedules in the league, like right. one of the easiest schedules in the league. I was like, everyone and their mother knew they weren't they weren't getting back there unless some major changes were made. Mm -hmm. We just played we played a, a Broncos team that was meh that year, and then right, in between played, their Super Bowl years, yeah, pretty much. And then what was the other one? I can't remember. Well, we beat the played. Bengals, and I think yeah, that, that was, was like a, that was a bad Bengals team. They yeah. were. They were shitty. They were like a, a wild card team that kind of snuck in. When I, I think that I think Dalton may have been hurt or or somebody was out. They they had a big injury. Or something was yeah. injured in the yeah. So and then they got to New England and it was and New England had just survived the Ravens. And so it was like yeah, there was yeah. no chance he yeah. was going in there. But to Flake Gate. I mean, that was we, the we 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 yeah. got actually we just we won a Super Bowl for Tom Brady. That's yeah. we just gave him the motivation yeah, to yeah. to win a Super. Bowl. Um, let's go into free agents. Right. So the top one on my list right now that I'm looking at, we have to go quarterback because it's a quarterback league. Mm -hmm. Kirk Cousins is, I mean, what is he going to get? He's going to get with this new, because Dak is remotely predict money. I, I, Dak is supposed to quote, reset the quarterback market with $60 million a year. That's what they're saying. Kirk has just made his living. Like he's made an insane amount of money doing, I mean, he played great this year. He played great last year, but overall, like pretty average football in in the scheme of things. And he's made like two hundred, three hundred million dollars off of that. Yeah. It's a lot of Coles cash. I, I don't want to be like such a hater of Kirk Cousins because you know I, I mean, but he's thirty six years old. Yeah. First of all, so what what are you going to get out of him at this point? Um, well, he's the he's the one year deal merchant. 
you, he'll he'll get yeah. a thirty five million dollar one year deal. Like a poor man's Rogers situation, where yeah. maybe there's a team that feels like I don't know. I have, I'd have to think about this. Like, who's right there, but needs a quarterback? But you're never really right there yeah. if you don't have a quarterback. Um, I don't. Know. Who could I see signing him besides Minnesota? Vegas. No. Yeah. Like, yeah. That makes sense. It doesn't. But he doesn't look right. There's just something not right about Kirk. And like he's that. such a nice guy, and the Raiders yeah. are supposed to be a bunch of assholes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's not going to be an insurance policy for somebody at this point. I mean, he's not. He, he still has. He's still a starter. It's. I mean, maybe I've I've heard possibly the Giants, hmm. depending on what goes on with that Daniel Jones situation. Like New England. New England. I mean, he. I think he would fit perfectly. Mm-hmm. That just just his look. He's a nice guy. That's kind of what you need, and veteran quarterback for a young yeah. head coach, yeah, kind of steady the ship, yeah. Um, I mean, maybe Seattle too, possibly whatever is going to happen with Geno. I don't know what they're going to do. He's not a free agent, is he? Is he free agent? Geno Smith, I don't think he is. But I mean, they could they could say we might. I mean, how much did they sign? I think they gave him a contract extension. Yeah, only Geno Stone big. is a free agent, not Geno Smith. Oh man, Geno Stone. I like Gino's time. I don't know if the Ravens can re-sign him. <laughs> um, hold on. What was Gino's contract? Let's see. So, yeah, he's got he's owed $12.7 million. 2025 cap hit is $38.5 million, which is big. Wow. That's, that's really big. Yeah. Can't be right. No, that is right. Holy shit. Yeah, he has a pen- potential out after 2024. But, I, I mean, are they satisfied with his play? In Seattle, especially a new head coach, he might want to come in and just wash everything away. And Kirk Cousins is right there. Yeah, yeah, that that actually makes sense when you put it that way. I mean, the Bucks if Baker leaves. If Baker, and I, I love Baker to the 49ers. I love him. Just dumb Brock Purdy already. I know I know they're not going to do it, because, especially because they don't have to pay. Right. They're not going to have to pay right. Brock. Cheap, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's very cheap, but like, it's it's hard to say that it, I mean it wasn't Brock's fault they didn't win the Super Bowl. Obviously he he didn't lose them that game. He didn't win them, but he didn't lose them that game. But can you imagine just Baker gripping and ripping it with all those weapons? George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, Brandon Ayuk. I mean that would be. Well, I don't think Brandon Ayuk's coming back. You don't think he's coming back? He seems pretty ticked off with the Niners. Really? Yeah, um, I know I know his I know his girlfriend or his wife was going on his Instagram story, but I really don't trust what the family members say. I could see big, uh, I could see cousins maybe even going to Chicago, hold down the fort for Caleb Williams or something. Although you think they're going to sit him? I mean, nah, probably not, but I don't know. That's not the worst thing in the world. Mahomes sat the first, his first year. Rogers sat a few years. Carson Palmer sat a couple of years. I mean, it's not a Brady sat a year. Not that that was the yeah. year what they had, but well, Palmer was the, the only first round or number one pick, right? Out of all those guys. He was the number, number one, one pick. Overall pick. Who were the other one? Rodgers. Yeah, right. Rodgers was late. Yeah. Yeah, Mahomes was what, like 10th or something. Um, yeah. I mean, even Roethlisberger didn't start the season. He didn't start week one. He didn't start until like week three. Yeah. So, yeah, probably not. But you're right. Palmer was the number one overall pick, but he didn't play a snap that whole first year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Ryan Tannehill. I want to talk a little bit about Ryan mm-hmm. Tannehill. Um, I weirdly... It kind of makes sense to see him in a vet in a Raider uniform. I don't know why, but may, they might bring him in as a backup. And I feel like eventually he will get into a game. Like I can, yeah, of course. We're sitting here week eight, and they're like, okay, like you know, uh, Kirk Cousins went down. Like Ryan Tannehill's coming into the game, and he'll win. He'll win that game, and then we'll think he's back, and he's not. But I, I, I mean, he's. He's back up all the way for me. There's, yeah. There's the oldest free agent right now is 38. That's Calais Campbell, former Raven, Jaguar, Falcon. And there's three free agents that are 36. Tannehill's one of them, Cousins and Brandon Graham. Um, there's no way that Tannehill's getting a starter's job off the bat. But oh, no. you know what? He could be a guy that could benefit from a change of scenery where maybe he has to start a few games. And mm-hmm. yeah, the Raiders, sure, why not? Yeah. Um, Leonard Williams. In Seattle. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, you you have to try and re-sign him if you're Seattle. I think. 
I mean, you want, you have to bring him back because especially you're trying to build a more defensive culture anyways, and you're in the shadow of the Legion of Boom. And I always think if you're a new head coach, I always think you build up those trenches before anything else. You go yeah. out and get offensive linemen and defensive linemen. and defensive linemen before you worry about, and you can get a quarterback, but you're going to ruin them like the Bengals already have with injuries and, right. you know, I mean, he, people are already saying Burrow's going to be the next Andrew Luck. Which is yeah, I'd be sad if that's really case. sad. Yeah, um, I really, I mean, Buffalo, Buffalo's gonna Buffalo can go get them. That would, I think that would be a really big pickup for them. Uh, I mean, it seems like Buffalo has guys on the defensive line. It seems like their problem is more. I mean, yes, it is on the line, but it's the linebacking core and a lot of young guys. They just have, they have so many injuries too. And why is it some teams just have so many injuries and some like the Chiefs have. I had hardly any like the whole yeah. year, and the Bills were down to like fourth stringers by the playoffs. I mean that, and that's a big difference. Um, but yeah, Buffalo should prioritize guys who could get after the quarterback. Pair him with an Ed Oliver mm -hmm. example. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if Buffalo's going to have some cap room with this new and improved uh, salary cap, that's not a bad fit. I mean, there's so many teams that could use a good, uh, a good defensive line. Almost. I mean, you could even say Kansas City if they lose. Well, sure, if it was Chris Jones, yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Just can't. I just can't see it. I, the thing is, when you're one of those dynasty teams, people just don't want to leave. Mm -hmm. And then it, it becomes a, you know, it's not that it's unfair, but it just becomes a disadvantage for everyone else. Because who's going to want to leave the Chiefs? Yeah. Sneed, they, yeah. he wants to stay there. Sometimes they don't have the choice, but. I don't know if Sneed's, I mean, obviously, again, whoever, they're, they're going to want to stay there. But I don't know if Sneed, he's kind of talking like he might, he, he's gone. Like it's set, it seems like he's gone. His franchise number is I don't know, 18 or something. It's much more doable. And then maybe they incentivize him to get a long-term deal. But if they do franchise him, it means they can't franchise Jones. And then Jones is probably, I mean, then they're going to have to work out a long-term yeah. deal, which they definitely could. Mm -hmm. And I still think they'll somehow end up getting both of those guys back, which is going to be not good for the rest of the league right now. Can't catch up. Um, but speaking of edge rushers, other edge rushers, how about Josh Allen? Not, Quarterback yeah. Josh Allen, but the Jag Jaguars, yeah, and he's really good. I don't know why. I I feel like, weirdly enough, I feel like he's going to go NFC. I think he's going to want to get out of there because that that I feel like there is an emotional thing when it comes to teams that kind of fall apart, like Jacksonville really did, and I'm sure that's really frustrating. And he might just want to get out of there completely, hard reset when it comes to that. I think Jacksonville has to try to keep him. They gotta, I mean, obviously they're going to try. Like, like Walker yeah. and Allen, I mean, they, they got to, if they're going to be serious about building this young core. But, yeah, maybe he wants out. Um, just looking at Greg Rosenthal's top 101 <laughs> free agents this year, and he's got Josh Allen ranked third, just ahead of Christian Wilkins, who had a really good year, although he had a dumb – Albeit unfair, roughing the passer call on the homes in the playoffs, <laughs> but um, he he had a really good season. Um, again, D lineman, right? Maybe the yeah. Bills just go out and steal him from a division rival. Yeah, why not? Um, what about? I don't know how how much how much do you really think that Harbaugh is going to try and do in this first season? Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh. Uh, Jim, Jim mean, Harbaugh. Yeah. What do you mean? What, what How you much mean? do you think? I mean, because I feel like that it's it's getting a lot of their guys are really getting up there. Mm -hmm. Like you look at Keenan Allen, you look at Cleo, yeah. uh, Cleo Max there, right? Yeah, he's been jump. He jumped around a lot. Um, he's getting up in age. He might. I feel like he might try and do kind of a reset. Maybe, yeah, maybe similar to what the Pats did when Belichick came in. He had look. He had some core guys there mm -hmm. like Bruschi and, and um, Ty Law but for the most part he had some aging veterans that they had to kind of clear the deck they got a lot of bargain basement guys that kind of turned them around to win it no one I think that's how the Chargers are going to have to approach this yeah. yeah I don't think they have a ton of cap room they have they think they have their franchise quarterback I don't know I can never tell with the Chargers because I don't know if anybody can resuscitate that franchise but yeah I think they got to clear a lot of that those older guys, Keenan Allen can't be back. I, I think why even keep a Khalil Mack? You can clear some cap space. Yeah. yeah. Um, they need to prioritize the draft, see if they can get draft capital for these guys. I, I don't know though, but the, but then again, I'm thinking they brought in Jim Harbaugh. They probably didn't bring in Jim Harbaugh to do a full 
reset. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because the Jim Harbaugh move feels like more of a win now kind of thing. But the Chargers are not set up. For yeah, win now, that's, so I don't really yeah. get that, I, where they're going to go. Yeah, I feel like they might try and do the the Rams model a little bit, where they're going to go out and sell the farm and say, or the Dave, basically Dave, be Dave Dombrowski. You're saying pillage go everything all in to try to get yeah, go to win with what they have. Because why would I mean? Or they, you know, you go out and make a lot of trades. You go out and just get rid of those old guys. Get rid of everything. Get as many good guys as you possibly can. I mean, that's what Dave Dombrowski did. He, right. he pillaged the Red Sox farm system. He pillaged the Tigers farm system, which he didn't win a title with Detroit, with the, but right, did with the Red Sox. Sox. Yeah. And then obviously it all fell apart. But <laughs> well, and then he got the Phillies. Uh, was he there in 2022? Or no, he did he come in the year after? But he still no. He came. He came in like he's been there a while. I think not to get too no, into baseball. To yet, off but, the topic, but um, he's there. been there a long time. He went there. I think he maybe took a year off. Oh no, he's been with the Phillies when they went to the World Series. So yeah, so he's yeah. right. And then Marlins, one of those. Anyway, mm, yeah, the Chargers. Nah, I, I don't. I don't think they can pull the Rams with what they have. I don't know. Not sell everything. No, no, they'd have to spend a ton of money in free agency. Yeah, um, Emmanuel Ogba from Miami. I feel like Miami really can't afford to lose anything on defense. No, right now. I mean, they really anything, can't. Yeah. You, they have to resign everything. They got to go and obviously they they did just release uh, Xavier Howard, but I mean, you you can't lose much else because that's. That was already kind of your issue. <laughs> Defend, I mean, defense. Like, your offense was not your problem this year. Right. Um, although Tua was – some would say he was the problem, but we don't know that. Um, you know, the last rank, he is top 101. 101 is Michael Thomas. The last rank free agent? Yeah, well, according to Greg Rosenthal, his top 101. Is Michael really? Thomas. Really? Yeah. Um, he's been – I mean, he's – his nickname Slant Boy. So that's because that's all he runs well, is slants. He's not, you know, completely. Yeah, I mean, he's not a million years old, but I mean, what else? I mean, what else? I can't imagine he's going to get anything big. Talked about Minshew last week. I mean, Tyrod Taylor's out there, solid backup. Probably not much more. Micah Hyde, interesting name. Mm -hmm. How about Jameis Winston? I love it. I, I want Jameis Winston. The NFL needs Jameis Winston, just like it needs a Gardner Minshew or Uber a Ryan Fitzpatrick. That's Winston, that's but, true. That's a yeah. problem. But I, I think the a lot you talk to anybody, like especially when they did that uh whatever the hell it was, the you know, they did the kneel down and then he handed it off. Like everyone came to his defense. So he's clearly a locker room guy. He's clearly someone that a lot of guys in the locker room really like. So you talking about that last game against yeah, the Falcons? Yeah, yeah, when Arthur Smith threw a tantrum. Oh, right, right. Because <laughs> he knew his job was is was gone, so he was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna scream as much as I can." But I feel like you you need guys like that. And well, I mean, he's a former number one overall pick. He's. I think you would look to to a younger quarterback for that. Yeah, yeah, and, and and he could probably stand to be a mentor as much as somebody could stand to learn from him. Yeah. Uh, so. I feel like I mean you could I don't I really don't want to say Houston because you have Davis Mills there who very intelligent went to Stanford so I trust any Stanford quarterback Andrew Luck John Elway um, I mean if if Minshew goes why not why not Indianapolis right why not <laughs> um, you could say Chicago too Chicago's gonna if, need a backup if they so go and if they go and get Caleb Williams. Yeah, if they're gonna, they're not gonna keep Fields. Fields will go here and maybe. I'd like Atlanta. Washington. Washington. I mean, they're gonna draft someone, but they could make. Do they bring him in? I don't know. Maybe that doesn't make sense. That uh, you got a couple Colts guys on the market. Kenny Moore, Grover Stewart. Yeah, Grover Stewart, big in the run stopping. I mean, unless and Blackman, oh, a lot of free agents on defense for the Colts. Yeah, they have a lot. Um, I would really like. Oh, Stefan Gilmore is a free agent again. Mm. Eh, he's kind of he's getting up there. I feel like they really need to keep that core, and Kenny Moore is a part of that core. This is they're going into a weird time because the Colts are top five in cap space this year, and we say that every single year. We say that every single goddamn year. Chris Ballard says 
I, you know, we, we have, we have 70 something million cap space. We can, we can be as aggressive as we want. And then he goes out and gets three linebackers, uh, like back, like third string linebackers, a couple of like shitty wide receivers, a backup quarterback, and maybe like a, a second string safety. He's like, these are really high character guys. Like, it's like, no, we have to go and get some guys. Like you have to go out and get some starters, but you have to take care of the, the hometown guys first. And yeah. Grover Stewart is a massive anchor in the run game for us. Like he is, and our, our line is very good if we actually blitz. Like if we, I, I think our get home rate is really, really like, it's like top of the league. Yeah. You have to keep Grover Stewart. You have to keep Kenny Moore. He had a really big bounce back year this year because he sucked. He was horrible in 2022. Um, but he really had a big year this year. Um, I think Blackman, he's younger, so you have to keep him. I mean, it's, again, like you have to, I'm assuming they're going to let guys go, and it's hard to say you're going to let guys go, but I feel like you have to keep those guys. Pittman, it's happening. He'll, I think he'll take a hometown discount from what I'm hearing. He's, he's got a farm there. He's, he loves Indianapolis whenever you talk about it, and he loves Anthony Richardson. Any any guy that talks about Anthony Richardson in that in that locker room is only positive things. They say they love his work ethic, they love you know just everything about him. Um, and it's it's a weird situation because you have all this cap space and Richardson is young. It's it's he's just, he's almost a little too young. It's like we don't want this now. I would rather be he takes his licks now. Obviously, be safe with him. Don't get hurt, but. You kind of want him to know what losing is like at this point. Right. Because a lot of guys, like, they know what losing is like, and then they're like, okay, now we know, like, I'm going to learn how to win now. Yeah. It's it's really weird. I, I hope – I really hope they go out and get everything. They – I I hope they – got the cap space. Sell yeah. out. Yeah. I really do. Um, not not just because of, oh, it's exciting. I mean, you went 9-8 and eight with Gardner Minshew. You almost made the playoffs yeah. with Gardner Minshew as, as your starting quarterback. Um, Alec Pierce, I'm not really sure what they're going to do with him. Josh Downs is going to be the number two or three guy, depending on what happens. Um, if, if we can go out and sign a, a big name wide receiver, I know Mike Evans is out there. OBJ is out there, but I just don't know if he's, he, he, he might be a little too old. Yeah. I think to go out and get, um, Curtis Samuels there. Huh. I don't know. He's out there. Um, a lot of Ravens. Defensive guys hitting the market. Matt Abuke yeah. will play the – I mean, it sounds like they'll franchise tag him. Patrick Queen um, on the market, you know. By the way, good, solid, you know, backup quarterback. I like Jacoby Brissett. Always liked him. I love him. He uh, – if, if he didn't hurt his knee against Cleveland in 2019, the, the Colts would have gone to the playoffs. remember seeing Jacoby Brissett play basketball in high school, Dwyer High School in uh, West Palm Beach. I think he's a heck of an athlete. Yeah, I like him, and he's capable. I mean, he absolutely he is. He, I mean, he doesn't. He won't make too many mistakes. I think you can't ask too much of him. I think right. that's any backup quarterback. You really can't ask too much of him. But he's he's that he seems like a big locker room guy too. Andrew Luck, in the very 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 small amount of times he's gotten to talk about him, he only has positive things to say. And, mm-hmm. and Jacoby says the exact same thing. They had a great relationship. Um, I mean, having a veteran guy in the locker room, even for Anthony Richardson, for some of these young guys, you could say, I don't, I don't think it would go back to Washington. I can't imagine, right? Oh, you never know. I mean, new, new uh, OC, new culture there. Um, I, I think, if anything, Sam Howell will be kept around as well. Yeah, because he's yeah. Um, you just, got, I think you really, you got to think about those young guys. Um, yeah, who's Dallas is back? Is it Cooper Rush? Is it Cooper Rush? Unless he's a free agent, but I don't think he is. So. Um, I mean, Carolina. You could, you could say Carolina for all, for Jacoby. Need backup right now. They need yeah. a veteran backup. Yeah. Here's a free agent that I, I haven't heard this guy's name in forever. Cordell Patterson. Cordero Patterson. Cordero Patterson. Cordell Patterson, whatever. And Mitch Trubisky, recent free agent. Just got cut. I mean, I don't it, go. He can go to the UFL, United Football League. <laughs> But Cordero Patterson, had, it's, it's a big place for the Pats. Really. Like, he was there one year, 2018. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, no, I mean, he's probably he's a, he's a big guy. I remember they played him at running back, even though he was a receiver. Well, I remember he did the he did the uh, flip flop. He was, or he kind of did both. He was a wide receiver and running, running back, back at the same time. Yeah. yeah, and he's been a great return man. Yeah, um, Gasecki, free agent, tight end. I mean, I'm I'm kind of going deep into the list here because I don't I don't want to cover just just the top guys. I feel like that's a little boring. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think we're talking about Snead, Jalen Johnson, see yeah. if, where if he gets a big contract in cornerbacks. I I was hoping we would the we didn't touch trade off the running for back. Oh yeah. Russell. Oh yeah. I mean, you could talk running uh, Henry and and Barkley. I mean, that's the biggest. That is the biggest market right now. Um, you're gonna have Henry Barkley and Pollard out there, which Pollard. He, he's one of the guys that, like, they they talked him up. They talked him up as the backup, and then they put him in that visit. They put all the pressure on him, and it seems like he kind of folded. Like, Deuce Vaughn, I feel like, was he, yeah. funny funny to watch, hilarious to watch. But, like, I would have loved to see him run more than Tony Pollard this year. Tony Pollard looked like he had no energy when he ran the yeah. ball. Who, who was the other guy? Who was their backup? It was... um. It wasn't Deuce Vaughn. Deuce Vaughn was the third stringer. It was because um, he he had a he had a pretty big year fantasy wise. Um, it was doubt not Dowdle. I don't know who that is. Yeah, that was Dowdle. Not Turpin. No, it was. I thought it was Cavante Turpin. Oh no, no, he's the wide receiver. They had a Rob Rob uh, Robert Turpin. Cavante hey. Cavante Turpin was the guy from the USFL who they ended up signing, and he's a great punt returner. Mm. I don't remember. I don't remember who the second stringer was. Rico Dowdle does not sound right. I'll say that. Um, but Saquon, I mean, where do we think Saquon's gonna gonna land? Because he's gonna get a lot of money from somebody. Somebody's gonna be desperate for running back. Somebody they want to flip. You can see him going to the Raiders, maybe. Because you know, Jacob's if Jacobs leaves, leaves, yeah, yeah, you can see that. What about how about Buffalo or something? Buffalo, yeah, they're, I mean, they're in the market for a big running. They need, I mean, they need like a, a, a another explosive on that offense. They do because they, they don't they don't have it at the receiver position. Now, I like James Cook, but he's not he's not like a game changing kind of running back. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I know. I know Alexander Madison had a good year, but I could see maybe Minnesota goes out and gets someone when they have this year of Jefferson left, and who knows what quarterback they're going to get. I feel like if they go out and get a quarterback, or maybe they re-sign Kirk Cousins, then they'll definitely sign a running back. Yeah. Because they might be saying, you know, this is, we're somewhat all in, kind of all in, um, as all in as passively all in yeah, as you can be all in. yeah um maybe no not detroit i was about to say detroit but i was like detroit no, needs to spend i think these teams that are close or got close last year yeah or been close we said buffalo detroit i think they need to get rid of that dream for them would be if they could get like a luxurious seed what about secondary issues what about chicago well, they, yeah, they have a ton of cap space. They've got the number one pick in the draft. They've got potentially more draft capital coming in if they can get someone to take fields. Um, you can get a veteran running back in there. You can get a Saquon. You get a Josh Jacobs. Sure. You get a – Derrick Henry might be a little too old. I think you're kind of pushing it there. Um, Henry feels like he's going to have, like, one more good year, and somebody big is going to sign him. Yeah, they're they're gonna sign him. They're gonna squeeze every last drop out of Henry. I could see. I mean Buffalo. You mentioned Buffalo, but again, they need more of an explosive back. And Henry just didn't have the explosiveness that we're used to that out of him. I mean, he still rushed for a thousand. He still was second in the league in rushing yards. Could you see Saquon going across town playing for the Jets? They already have Brees Hall. I know, but yeah, he's had some injuries. I mean, maybe the Jets feel like the team, they, they just need to make a splash, keep their fans dreaming. I don't know. Keep, <laughs> keep them dreaming. Get Aaron Rodgers back. We would talk about the Jets, but. I don't, I don't even want to talk about the Jets. No, they no, are just. Impressive. Yeah, so sad. Um, Houston is, it? by the way, Houston's a team that has some cap space. 
and as a young team that might that not might be they are ready to take a big next step. Yeah. Um, I know Jonathan Greenard is a, a free agent they need to bring back, but uh, I think boy, how nice would it be for CJ Stroud if he can big play running back? Yeah. To to help oh my god help yeah. balance things out. That that would, I, I wouldn't count out Houston, especially trying to poach Henry from Tennessee division. Now, what about Pittsburgh? Because I, I do want to talk about them because they're in a tough spot right now. What are you going to do with Kenny Pickett? Yeah. yeah Mason Rudolph is a free agent, too. Right. And, and he, Trubisky's gone. I mean, Rudolph, say what you want, he led them down the stretch. Like, they made yeah. the playoffs with him at quarterback. So, I'm not... I think, I'm, I'm telling you, I think Gardner Minshew. That, that's in that Pittsburgh? fit perfectly in Pittsburgh. The long hair coming out of the back? I can see it. I can... I want to be Palomalo. Because I don't think they can go out and get someone who's so much better that they can't justify him being a backup. I think they need someone who who's like right on Pickett's level that's going to push him. Yeah. And who can step in and give him a spark. Because it doesn't feel like they're ready to make, like, to give up on Pickett. It's only yeah. going to be his third year. Yeah, it's a little premature. Still, I think you give him at least one more year. So I think someone like Minshew, I don't even think a Brissett. I think a Minshew, well, maybe a, maybe a Brissett. But, yeah, I, I don't think you can go big with a quarterback, but I think you could try to get him a big play receiver. I think you yeah. could try to get him a big – I think the Steelers are going to make – they're not traditionally like a big-time free agent team. Kind of like Green Bay. They, 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 like, they get their guys. Yeah. They get their guys. But I think this might be one of those times where Pittsburgh needs to say, like, we gotta we got to get a few playmakers in there. There's one more team I want to talk about, and then we'll move to our draft. We can fly through the draft. Um, but Denver, they are – Oh, yeah, the quarterback situation. Their quarterback situation and their running back situation. Right. And Jerry Judy doesn't stay healthy. Yeah. Who do they have at wide receiver? I mean, that's really worth it. Yeah, I'm Corlin Sutton, I guess. And they have the new, they have the new owners, the Walmart – <laughs> the Walmart owners. Oh, right, right, right. So, I mean, they could be looking to spend some money. You have brand new head or real. I mean, honestly, it feels like last year was Sean Payton trying to reset as much as he can. And this is going to be the really like we're resetting it here. Maybe they're going to I think they might have a big free agency. They might go out and get some guys. Kirk Cousins could be one of those guys. Um, you could see like maybe an interdivision. Josh Jacobs goes over there. Too. Yeah, yeah, they, they need to get some kind of. Impact. I think their line is their line is support too. Yeah, right now they've got Stidham listed as their number one quarterback. I would maybe they say as the third stringer. I would say they would hold off on a quarterback, and because this is a bit. I mean, this is probably one of the biggest running back classes in recent memory. I would say maybe they go out and get a running back, or even a big play receiver. Do you go after Mike Evans or? A, I just, I, I really think Evans is going to stay. I think they're going to work that out because he wants to, he wants to be a buck for life, which mm -hmm. who would want to be a buck for life? I mean, that's so sad, but. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it is, cu I'm curious to see what Denver does with their quarterback situation. They cut Wilson and then did they ride and stay open? They, they got to bring somebody else in. Especially yeah. if, if they get rid of Wilson. Tannehill. Yeah, even a Brissett. Tannehill or Brissett feel like they really fit. Yeah, to me, just just their looks. Like a lot of times, I go off my stupid sports brain. Yeah, where I'm like, like Who? he looks like he'd be good in that. Yeah. What colors look right? Like Kirk Cousins doesn't look right in silver. Minshew. I think Minshew is a Steeler. I don't Minshew know why. looks right, right in yellow yeah. and black. He looks perfect. Um, because I, I always felt he looked a little weird in the Jacksonville, in that Jacksonville color. Sure. And Minshew in Denver could be an interesting one, too. Yeah. And speaking yeah, of uniforms, yeah, we're going to okay. do our uniform draft. Right. I'm going to forfeit the first pick to you. Yeah. You can. I'm going to give you the 1-1 here. Let me just... Well, I, 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 so I'm a very visual guy. I, I want to be looking at all of you at once, so I'm not, I'm not uh, missing anything. Um, the NFL has uh, Adam Rank had the ugliest uniforms in history. <laughs> He, he actually could be, uh... These, so this is our favorite. This is not the best. This is just what you love the most. Oh, you know what I don't like? I never liked the Steelers Bumblebee ones. So, oh, um, I love the Steelers. I was Seahawks with those those like really bright green ones that they wore on like 
prime time games. Oh, it was just <laughs> nauseating. Oh yeah, the the well the Nike the lime green or whatever. What was it? The Nike the color rush. Every yeah, team right. had those ugly yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, like the mustard. Who had the mustard uniform? Uh, Jacksonville. Jacksonville, yeah. I think who? I think it was like maybe Cleveland and Jacksonville played a Thursday night game because they would only Tennessee, wear them on Thursday night. Jacksonville, Tennessee really and Jacksonville. Played. That was a uh, Henry's hundred yard or ninety nine yard. Yeah, rush. yeah, that, that sounds about right. Um, so how does this work? Do so you you do one, I do one, you do one. It's just alternating. Basically. And we're going with best. I, no, your favorite. Favorite of all time. Yeah, I, I really like the Chargers powder blue, but the but the the like set earlier, like earlier, not the not they went a little sleeker in like the late two thousands, and now it's more now it has that alternate look that they use it as like their main one. Um, um, but I'm thinking like early. 2000s, the ones that really looked like the old AFL Chargers. The the, so the I Lance guess... Allworth Chargers Powder Blues are my favorite. Okay, um, I'm gonna go with my all-time favorite uniform. Like this, I don't think I think almost of this is all of sports. The Houston Oilers. Just there's something about that well, Houston kind of that Oilers. Blue. Yeah, yeah. The the blue and red. I don't know why the Titans are the Tennessee Titans. Just go to the Tennessee Oilers. I think they did it for one year when they made the move. I think they were the Tennessee Oilers for one year, and then they rebranded the whole thing, which the Clippers just rebranded, which I like the Clippers oh, rebranded. Right. Yeah. Um, but I'm going Houston Oilers. Those things are gorgeous. Just and I, I mean the powder blue. Whatever, the, I think they have like a home and away, the powder blue ones. Yeah. The, you can't go wrong with powder blue. I mean, the Phillies powder blue, the Royals, I think they have a powder blue as well. Um, the Cardinals, the St. Louis yeah, Cardinals, those yeah. like 70s, 80s, they're, they're awesome. So do you get to pick again then? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I'm going to go, I, I hate like, cause I hate just going all throwbacks, like throwback, yeah. throwback, throwback. It feels a little easy, but the Pat, the Patriot, the, I do like the that. red, yeah. those red Patriot, the, the one where, um, the Pats beat the, the Titans like 59 to nothing yeah. or something. Oh yeah. Yeah. Whatever they yeah. wore then. Those are, the, that was in 2009. That was the AFL celebration. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, I'm going, and this is traditional. I've always loved the Carolina Panthers road uniforms. Now, there's some teal in it, but it's there's just the, it's just white and black, just enough teal to keep you kind of like, okay, this is. They just always look really sleek, and I associate it with that 2003 team that I loved with Galome and Steve Smith. And so I'm going Carolina Panthers original OG road uniforms. Let's see here. I'm just trying to the. Let me see. The black with the teal trim yeah. on them? Yeah, not those gross, pure teal alternates that they started wearing in like the mid-2000s. Not even the home jersey, which is black with the trim. I like just the white with the, sh the, the teal trim on the shoulders. Oh, the white jersey the with white the teal jersey. trim. Yes. Let me see here. I'm just yes. trying to make sure I get just it Just right enough here. color, just enough hint of subtlety. All right, do I get to go? Do I get another one? Yeah. Because I'm staying late night, well, no, early 2000s. I like when the St. Louis Rams upgraded from those gold ones that, that they wear now as the throwbacks to the ones that they wore with the greatest show on turf in 2000. They started wearing them in 2000 after they won their first Super Bowl. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just because I associated with that era, that the greatest show on turf era, but like. The, the gold, the golden blue? Yes. The go Well, look up like. 2001 Rams. And if you just look at the images, the, the uniforms they wore that year as their home jerseys. Oh, and I'm in the road jerseys too. So the, it's like the. It's, it, it's like, not the yellow gold. It's no, more no, of no, a mustard gold. It's like dark. They had the, well, the road uniforms. Well, the home uniforms were the dark blue, gold trim, gold numbers. Yeah. And then they would wear gold pants. Um, and then the road uniforms were the white, dark blue numbers. The just gold trim on the shoulders mm -hmm. and like dark blue sleeves yeah. with the then they I think they upgraded the ram um, horn to gold. It was more of a yellow color when like they were wearing them when they won it in '99. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I just I, I again I think it was just cool because I 
I, I don't love football in domes, but I kind of like watching them in the dome when yeah. they were, you know, that high flying team. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to, my next one. So number, th my third pick, uh, I'm going to go with the dolphins throwback, the green jerseys, green, oh, not the orange, with the, orange the green, the green with the orange numbers on the shoulder. So they wear them, they wear them as throwbacks now. Um, Oh, the, the teal you're talking about. Well, no, oh, man. oh, the, they're more. Yeah. Was that the one they were wearing when they did the Miami miracle? Yes, I think they were wearing that those. One. Yeah, yeah, but that, but that, I'm trying to remember if that day it was all the, it was all teal. I don't know. The, the, the Dolphins have too much teal. If anything, I would like the Dolphins low uniforms, but even that has too much, too much aquamarine going on in it. Yeah, I'm looking at these ugly ass, not the orange shirt, the I, green. It's whatever. I mean, it's like what Dante Culpepper wore. I was at the game in 2004 when the Dolphins famously upset the Patriots on Monday Night Football. Of course, I left before they came back and won. But they were wearing those orange throwbacks that year. And those were kind of cool. They had they would bust those out like once a year on prime time. They were orange Dolphins alternates. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going. Is that teal, teal or teal. green? I don't know. Well, it's, I think the one well, you're these, more green. Look at here. You can kind of tell here. Yeah, those yeah, exactly. and it has so it has like it's a white lettering and then an orange back or a yeah orange background on the numbers. Right, it's gorgeous to me. Orange, and then I, I want to throw in like a, a simple, simple one. Um, I'm gonna go with like those. They're they're so ugly, but they're gorgeous. Also. Um, the 49ers, like, the gold mid 2000s. So, yeah, it was kind of like almost red. Yeah, it's, it was just, I, I want to say it was like right before Alex Smith, like the mid 2000s, this like red with that, that again, like that mustardy gold. But they, but they changed the letter. The, the numbering almost looked more like the Arizona Cardinals old jerseys. I like I'm looking at one here. Teo, like the early 2000s the ones I like. Let me see. The uh, Romans. Yeah, let me. That might be what I'm thinking of. Yeah, I'm thinking of that one. Yeah. It almost looks like, honestly, it almost looks like a Bucks jersey. Yeah, a little to bit. Me. A little bit like what they, maybe not what they wear now. Maybe it is what they wear now. I'm trying to think of a Bucks jersey now. I hate the Bucks uniforms. I hate way. the current 49ers uniforms. Yeah, the oh, current 49er uniforms like are ugly, too. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give you one. Or no, is it, are you still on your... Uh, no, you're up. Okay. I like the traditional, because now they don't wear... Now they wear the orange as a home jersey. I like the Bronco blue. Dark, the blue home jerseys that they started wearing in 97, because they changed from the orange crush after 96. They lost in the postseason. They changed to the new dark blue jerseys, and they won two Super Bowls. But then they changed those. I think the year Peyton Manning got there, I think they started wearing the orange as their primary and the blue became yeah. their alternate jersey. So if you look at like early 2000s Broncos, you know, last year, of course, the last year at Mile High was 2000. I just, I just like the blue with the orange trim. I don't know why. I just like it. It just fits with the, with the stadium and they kind of play in like, you know, in, yeah. in, in the mountain. I don't know. It just looks right. It looks right. Early, it was the early 2000s. Early 2000s, and I think I'm looking at a picture of Brian Greasy here. It looks like the, I can't tell if this is an optical illusion, but the orange trim of the jersey actually comes down and continues into the pants. <laughs> which is oh, it cool. does. It's really cool. I never noticed that. That does. That, that is, absolutely that 2001 does. 2001 Broncos, they were rocking the orange pants. Oh, no, white pants, but the orange trim. Interesting. But I, I And I like the Broncos road jerseys at that time, too. I still like them. I think I, there's something about subtlety that's. I think the Broncos have to bring back the, the unicorn. Whatever, whatever the the hel the white helmet with the like the the big D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That that's that has to crush. be brought back. I just think that's so much better. I'm something about that, like the blue. Maybe I, oh no, I'm looking at it right now. It's the blue helmet with the orange stripe down the middle, and then the white kind of outline on the orange stripe. Right. But then it's blue all on the sides. And then it's the orange D. Yeah. There's some, to me, there's something about that. That's just, cause I always think of like with the new ones, for some reason, Brock Osweiler always comes to mind mm. when I see them. 
Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any. Plus, seeing Elway in that looks weird. <laughs> yeah. It does not look right. You know, I, the Saints wore these um, retro gold unis in 2002, and I feel like they may have brought them back since, but they had a couple games in 2002 when they wore. Yes, they were. They were um, if you look at 2002 New Orleans Saints, they had a game where it almost looked like a color rush jersey. Because I, I like their regular jerseys with gold pants and yeah. black. But they had, it was like a light gold. And it was just all through. It was just light gold mm-hmm. and black numbers. I, I know exactly what you're talking and, but about. But then they also had, th- that year, they also wore another type of throwback that year. And I'm looking at it on their on their website, if you go in New Orleans, says, where it was like black with like the thicker gold numbers mm-hmm. um, and yeah. The yellowish pants it was kind of i don't know white it's a, a gold and white um stripes on the side or on the sleeves right yeah and on the pants and i'll tell you that 2002 saint sidebar one of the weirdest teams in nfl history they beat every great team that year and lost to all the horrible teams fascinating team i actually think i did a draft america article on that a few years back about i don't know if you'll ever see an like an anomaly like that of one team that could be every great team. They swept the Bucks, who won the Super Bowl, and they lost to like the two and fourteen Bengals, three and thirteen Lions. So it fits that they wore all these different uniforms because they were so Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. All right, you got one more. I got one more. Yeah. Uh, oof. Um, you know what? I'm gonna do it because they brought it back this year. The Seahawks. Uh, you, did I steal that from you? Man, I was I was really thinking. Yeah, about it. I mean the Kingdom Seahawks jerseys with like the green, the blue green. Um, God bless them for bringing that back yeah. this year. I mean, fantastic. I liked when they. I didn't mind when they. Chris Berman used to say it was like they look like CFL uniforms when they changed it in 2002. I think it was. Yeah. And now it's a di- it's it's they they've changed that look again. But I love I love those John Kitna early you know late nineties Kingdom Seahawks jerseys. Yeah. I'm since there's no more no more. I'm just gonna mention a few just like my honorable okay. mentions. Um, the Eagles throwbacks are well, the, the 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 like Kelly, the Kelly Green. Those are good, but they had one in '07 when they wore a blue and gold. Oh and yeah, disgusting. I love those too. You liked it? Oh. Those are those are so ugly. It's like you know, it comes back so around. Bad, it's, it's like good awesome kind of thing. Um, yeah. I mean, the Raiders are very classic, but the, yeah. the I col- like the road uniforms. Raiders. The, more are than those like. the silver ones? Well, this, yeah, but no, I'm talking about like Super Bowl Raiders more recently. Oh, okay, not not. This year's a different number. You know. The uh, the bumblebee ones for the Steelers. Terrible. Uh, the Packers when they looked like they were wearing oh, no pants. Yeah, that was bad. Those like tan. Those are hilarious to me. Yeah. I love those. Uh, the Vikings throwbacks are gorgeous. That like it's it's yeah. not it's not very different, but it's just enough where it's like yeah, this is really sick. Uh, Go look at the 96 Ravens. Look at the numbers on their jersey. It was so cartoonish. I was. I have to mention the Ravens at some point. And those are purple, hilarious. Our purple's classic. But if you look at the, like Ray Lewis, the, the jerseys look insane. It just looks so weird. It looks like someone, like, it was like animation. There was another really weird Ravens jersey. Um, well, they wore black pants. Which was weird. They had purple with black pants. They had one. They had one. It was like with the Maryland flag on it. Or something. I can't remember what it was. There was a. It was either a jersey. It was a weird placement for the flag or something. I can't. I'm looking at gold pants with with the purple jersey, which is mm. hilarious. Just ugly, and I I I adore ugly uniforms too. Like they're just so funny to me. Yeah. Um, I would rather see a ridiculously ugly uniform than something that's just so boring. Like the Colts are boring. They oh, are so boring. They it's, don't do anything. Some people say it's classic. It's fucking boring. The, they always do the throwback against the Steelers with the Colt on the back, like the two two Colts uh, logos on the back and nothing on the side, and then they have like the three stripes. Nothing unique. There's nothing unique no. about it. Um, the Steelers, I think they've had a couple cool throwback ones. Um, Cincinnati, eh. They're kind of eh. The the helmet is cool. I like the helmet with the well, the, the stripes, the tiger stripes. Now, but they had an orange alternate in the mid two thousands, which was kind of cool. 
Um, the Lions are mad. They're pretty boring. Like, the Chiefs haven't changed, really. No. At the all. The Browns have, but everything looks weird. But it's the, gonna be the classic 2003 when they wore the orange pants with the white jerseys. I like that. But the one, and I'm wrestling with these two. It's either, it's either the uh, '90s Bills with the red, the red helmet and the blue bill, or the Giants, the the, the '90s Giants, not the current uh, ones with the NG, not the red um, Giants. It was. Like oh five. No, no, no. I'm just talking about nineties um Giants. Let me see here. Yeah, the one they brought him back, I think, this year. It has the Giants in script. It's whatever Lawrence Taylor wore. Right. I'm right. wrestling with those two, but I'm going because I've done a lot of blue. Well, I've actually gone back and forth on this. I'm gonna go with the blue because I've done two red and one blue. I'm gonna go with the Giants. With the giant script on it, just very classic, right, right, right. very just it, it just screams 1990s, 1980s, really to me. Whatever, whatever uh, giants, yeah. They're, I thought they were, they're doing new ones again this year, I think. Are they? I want they were announcing uniforms, and we're gonna wrap up in a minute here. Yeah, coming in April, they're doing new uniforms. They, they just did new ones not mm-hmm. long ago, I feel like. Whatever they did was like two years ago. Either way, they're meh. They're okay. All right. Well, um, that's it. We're gonna wrap it up. Uh, I think there's a few art. There's a few cool new articles that have come out on Chaotically Intolerant. Uh, so go check that chaoticallyintolerant.com. Some baseball stuff. We're gonna be ramping up the baseball. I think we're gonna be doing some vlogs from maybe some different spring training games. We're gonna try and coordinate that. Um, And uh, yeah, that's all. And we will see you on Monday.